Bismillahir Rahim and uh, welcome back to this next video and uh, in this particular video I am going to talk about a specialized class of enzymes uh, which are known as the phosphatases and these phosphatases they are very important for the uh, regulation of cellular signaling in the living organisms. When you talk about the phosphatases, uh, these phosphatases they are an essential group of enzymes that play a crucial role in cellular signaling and maintaining the balance of phosphorylation in biological system. So to understand the function of the phosphatases, uh, you need to understand what is phosphorylation. So when you talk about this phosphorylation, uh, this is actually a biochemical process, uh, an enzymatic process in which a phosphate group is added to a protein of molecule and this phosphorylation or this addition of a phosphate group to this protein or molecule is going to alter the structure and function of the protein or the molecule. So these phosphatases they are very important in maintaining this balance of phosphorylation. Now when you talk about this phosphorylation uh, uh, this is actually working as a molecular switch. So what I mean by molecular switch is that this a phosphate group uh, that can uh, lead to the activation of a protein or a molecule. It can lead to the deactivation of a protein or a molecule. And by this phosphorylation, uh, this phosphorylation acting as a molecular switch, uh, regulate various cellular processes such as the growth, metabolism and the gene expression. So when you want to turn on a particular protein or a molecule, you can do phosphorylation. When you want to turn off a particular protein or molecule, you can go for the uh, phosphorylation depending on the uh, type of the protein or molecule you are concerned with. So the phosphorylation is the addition of a phosphate group. So what these phosphatases do that these are the enzymes that catalyze the removal of a phosphate group. So on one side you are adding a phosphate group, on the other side you are removing the phosphate group thereby you are maintaining a, a balance of the phosphorylation. And this uh, removal of the phosphate group from the phosphorylated proteins or molecule that actually restore the uh, protein or the molecule to their original state. So for example, uh, if this is a target protein, so what these uh, protein kinases will do, so this protein kinase uh, will be uh, a protein or an enzyme that is going to add a phosphate group to its target protein or molecule. So if you look at this particular, if this is the target protein, and uh, in this particular target protein, uh, either this is the serine, uh, threonine or the tyrosine amino acid. So it can be any of them. So when you talk about this uh, target protein, so the protein kinase that is going to use the ATP uh, as a source of the phosphate group that is going to convert the ATP into the ADP and adding a phosphate group to this target protein. So the target protein has now been phosphorylated. You can call this as the phosphorylated target protein. Uh, I have a detailed video on these protein kinases uh, and I'll share the link in the description. But simply keep in mind that these protein kinases uh, are the proteins uh, that can add a phosphate group on specialized amino acids like the serine, threonine, uh, tyrosine or the uh, histidine. I have detailed discussion on that uh, in my video on the kinases. So when these protein kinases, they add a phosphate group to their target protein, converting them into the phosphorylated target protein, then what the phosphatases do is when these phosphatases that act on these phosphorylated target protein, they are going to remove the phosphate group, thereby converting the target protein to its original uh, dephosphorylated state. So uh, as I told you earlier that this uh, uh, phosphatases, they are going to maintain a balance of the phosphorylation. So this is how this is, uh, this is how uh, it is achieved. Now what they simply mean is that these phosphatases that work in opposition to kinases uh, to ensure a finely tuned balance uh, of phosphorylation within the cell. So when you need a phosphorylation on a target protein, you do that, that particular target protein performs its function. Now you do not need uh, any more activity of that particular protein. The phosphatases will come, they will uh, remove the phosphate group from the target protein, thereby converting them into their uh, original state. Now, let us talk about the types of the phosphatases. Uh, what are the different types of the phosphatases in the living organisms? Now, the first important type of the phosphatases, and they are known as the protein tyrosine phosphatases. For short, you can call them as the PTPs. 
Now, what these protein tyrosine phosphatases do, that they are going to dephosphorylate protein on tyrosine residue. What I mean by this is that if you have a target protein that has been phosphorylated on the tyrosine residues, this protein tyrosine phosphatases will come and they will remove the phosphate group from the tyrosine amino acid, thereby converting the protein to their original state. So we are talking about the phosphatases, but these are specific phosphatases. They are, these are the tyrosine phosphatases. They can only remove the phosphate group from the uh, tyrosine amino acid. As I've told you that this phosphorylation can occur on the serine, it can occur on the threonine, it can occur on the tyrosine so these protein tyrosine phosphatases will only uh, dephosphorylate those particular proteins that has been phosphorylated on the tyrosine residue they cannot remove the phosphate group from those particular proteins which has been phosphorylated uh, on their serine or threonine residues there is another special class of the phosphatases for them we will discuss that in a while so if this is uh, a tyrosine amino acid uh, as you can see over here, the kinases, the protein tyrosine kinases, this PTK, this protein tyrosine kinases will utilize the ATP as a source of the uh, phosphate group and they are going to convert the uh, target protein that is going to phosphorylate the target protein on the uh, tyrosine amino acid. Then these PTPs, these PTPs, they will come, then they are going to remove this phosphate group, thereby converting the uh, target protein to their original state. And again, the tyrosine uh, residues, they will be in their dephosphorylated form. Uh, if I give you important examples from this class, uh, an important class is known as the uh, CD45. And this uh, CD45 is actually uh, a receptor-linked protein tyrosine phosphatases that is, is expressed on all leukocytes. As you are talking about the leukocytes, that would mean that this CD45 is very important in the uh, immune cell signaling. And this is a, a receptor-linked protein tyrosine phosphatases, which would mean that this protein tyrosine phosphatases is an integral part of a receptor. Uh, the second important example from this particular class, that is the uh, SHP1, and this is a non-receptor PTP. That means this protein tyrosine phosphatases is not uh, a part of a receptor. Uh, it may be a, a free. It may be uh, present freely in the cytoplasm. And what this SHP1 is, that it, it acts as a negative regulator of inflammation and it regulates a variety of the intracellular signaling pathways, uh, which is not the scope of this particular video. But just to give you examples, the CD45 would be a receptor-linked protein tyrosine phosphatases. This SHP1, that would be a, a non-receptor protein tyrosine phosphatase. Uh, I'll talk about the uh, other types of the uh, uh, protein phosphatases uh, in my next video. So if you like the video, uh, please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and share it with your friends.